So for number 16, we want to find the area um, bounded between these curves, and then we want to revolve it about the line x is equal to negative 1. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn these curves. Um, one thing to notice is that the first curve, x, y, is equal to 1. Um, when we divide it by both sides by x, we just get the, the rational function y is equal to 1 over x. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn that. And we do want to revolve it about the line x is equal to negative 1. Um, let me put that in. So let's see. This is 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So x is equal to negative 1. We do want to revolve it about this line. And we're using the disk method. Um, now, using the, the disk method, if we're revolving about this line, um, what we're doing is we're summing up the disks across the y-axis. Now, there's a, a, a problem with, with that, because right now, um, this area over here that's bounded between y is equal to 1 over x, y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 2. Um, when we, we have our disks, so our disks are going to look like this, that's their, their width, and they are going to be revolved like so. Um, they're going to be wide disks like this. Yeah. So when we have this, right now we do have a problem, right? Because of these boundaries. Um, so all the way up to here, we can see that the biggest radius is at x equals 2, and the smallest radius is at x equals 1. But when we, we go up, like when we go over here, now the biggest radius is no longer the light blue curve, it's the dark blue curve. So we're actually going to have to break this up into two integrals, because there would be no way to, um, using the disk method, to express this revolution using a single integral, because the upper boundary changes. Um, so with that being said, we're going to divide this into two parts. We're going to um, divide it right over here. So the first integral is going to be um, the, this disk over here, right? This, this guy here. And we can see um, that we, we are integrating with respect to y because we're stacking these up across the y-axis. Um, so it is the, let's see, the integral here on the y-axis, we have to find where the line x is equal to 2 intersects with y is equal to 1 over x. So what we're going to do here is um, we're just going to switch these variables around so I can express things in terms of x. Um, which is, so x is equal to 1 over y, right? So we're setting 1 over y is equal to 2 um, to see where they intersect, right? And at this point, so y is equal to 1 half. So basically this first integral, it'll go from y is equal to 0 down here all the way up to y is equal to 1 half, which is this point, Um so let me, yeah, y is equal to, to 1 half, right? Um, so to, to calculate this now, uh, let me just delete this. So um, to calculate this, we basically have to, um, to sum up the, this ring, this ring that goes like so. And this ring is the biggest disk, which has R1, minus the smaller disk, which has or 2. So um, basically here we have a1 minus a2. Now a1 is just um, pi times the length of the bigger radius. Now to go fr from, um, maybe I'll put this in a different color. So to go from here all the way out like so, let's see, this we have 1. So from minus 1 to 0 we have to go 1 and then 2, 3. So the distance of the biggest radius is just 3. It doesn't change, right? It's just fixed. Um, so the a1 is pi times 3 squared, and then a2, which is the distance from x equals to negative 1 to x is equal to 1, right? That's where it's going to touch it. Um, it's just pi times 2 squared, because this, this distance is 2. 
Um, so this is a nice expression for us because the um, the radius doesn't really change, right? Um, it's just fixed at x equals 1, x equals 2. Um, so this is a nice little expression for us. Therefore, a1 minus a2 is equal to, um, let's see, this is 9 pi minus, oops, 4 pi is equal to 5 pi. So basically, the first area is just um, the integral from 0 to 1 half, right, um, of 5 pi, um, 5 pi times dy. That's our first integral. And then plus... Now we have our second integral, um, and our second integral is going to go from 1 half, and now we just have to find this other point of intersection. So this other point, um, we're going to set these the blue dark blue equation equal to the, um, to the green line, because then we can find that point of intersection. So that we have here, um, x is equal to 1 over y, right? And we're going to set this equal to 1 over y is equal to 1. Therefore, y is equal to 1. That's our second boundary, um, this point here. So now we're doing our second integral, um, which we're, we're integrating from, from this point here, um, in terms of the y, right? From, from the lower point here at 1 half all the way to, to 1. And we can see here that now our disk is going to look a little bit different, right? Because it's going to go like, like so. So... Even though the smallest radius is still at x is equal to 1, now our biggest radius is changing, right? It's no longer a nice fixed x is equal to 2. Um, now it, it changes. Uh, the closer we get to x is equal to 1, the smaller it'll be. Um, so it does change as a, as a function of, of x. So um, our boundaries goes from 1 half to 1. And now let's just calculate our a1 and our a2. So in this case... Um, our a1, a1 is equal to pi times the biggest radius, right? So um, the biggest radius, let's calculate this distance. We're going from all the way to, from x is equal to negative 1. Um, we're crossing x is equal to 1. Uh, maybe I should have drawn that a little bit higher. Yeah, we're going from x is equal to negative 1. We're crossing x is equal to 1. And then we're, we're hitting this, right? So... When we talk about this um, in, in terms of, of the y-axis, we're, um, we're going the height of the function, right? Because the height of the function is defined from the y-axis all the way to here. So we're going the height of the function plus an added distance of 1. Um, because of the height of the function, it changes, right? So we're going the height plus a little distance of 1 to go from the y-axis all the way to negative 1. Um, so... It's pi, um, and this is 1 plus. Now, because we're integrating with respect to y, like we're stacking these um, these disks across the y-axis, we do have to, um, to express this as a function of y. So basically, x is equal to 1 over y plus 1 over y squared. That is a1. Um, and a2, the, the smaller radius, it doesn't change. It's just the distance from x is equal to negative 1 all the way out here, right? Uh, it's still fixed, so a2 is just um, pi times 2 squared. So when we go a1 minus a2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to FOIL this out. So I'll just put pi outside, and this is, let's see, this is 1 over y squared um, plus, let's see, plus 2 over y plus 1, and then minus, minus a2, right? So minus 4. Therefore, a1 minus a2 is equal to, let's see, um, pi times 1 over y squared plus 2 over y, and then plus 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3. So now we're ready to set up our other integral. Um, I'm just going to put the, the pi outside here, and that is... Uh, 1 over y squared plus 2 over y um, minus 3 and all of this times dy. All right, so we are um, we are ready to integrate now. Let me just make some space for us. So our first integral, um, 
our first integral is just 5 pi times dy, so it's just 5 pi y evaluated from 0 to 1 half. And then the second integral is, um, I'm going to put the pi outside, pi times, let's see, this is y to the negative 2, um, so it's minus 1 over y, and then this is 2 plus 2 ln y, and then minus 3y, and all of this evaluated um, from 1 half to 1. So basically, we just have to um, evaluate using our boundaries. Now, for the first one, we're only evaluating the upper boundary because the lower boundary will go to 0. So let's see, that's 5 pi times 1 half, so 5 pi over 2. Um, let me make this a little bit better. Let's see, that is 5 pi over 2. And then for this one, um, plus pi, um, let's evaluate it first at 1. So minus 1 over 1 is just minus 1, uh, plus 2 ln of 1, that's 0. Um, <clears throat> so plus 0, and then minus 3 times 1, so minus 3. And then minus, my, uh, minus let's see, 1 over 1 half, um, that's 2, but then that's also negative, so it becomes plus 2. And then um, minus 2 ln of 1 half, so minus uh, 2 ln of 1 half. And then let's see. And then minus 3 over 2, but then minus again, so that becomes plus 3 halves. Um, so when we simplify this out, we're actually going to have, let me put the pi outside and join everything together. So I'm going to have pi, this is 5 halves, let's see, um, minus 1, minus 3, plus 2, this sum goes to minus 2. So minus 2 plus 3 halves is minus 1 half, so I'm going to cancel that out, um, that gives us minus 1 half. And then minus 1 half plus 5 halves is just 2, so that is gives us just 2, and then minus, um, minus 2 ln of one half yeah and that is our um that is our final calculation so yeah it's pi times two minus two ln of one half and that is how we find this volume when we revolve it about x is equal to negative one